So for this video, the only way you're going to be allowed to watch it is if you bring your own ingredients. So let me know what you brought down below in the comments and let's build it. Well, let's strap on our tool belt and get to some proverbial hammer swinging. Now, I never took shop in high school, so uh, let's see how this goes. First, let's block out our shelf using some primitive shapes. I've mirrored the first cube to give me an indication of the width of the shelf, essentially setting up the confines within which I plan to work. Push some vertices around to make an L shape, and then get to beveling some edges. I want to round out these intersections as well to give the whole thing a softer side. Next thing we'll need is the actual shelf, duh. Squash out a simple cube, bevel some edges, can't get simpler than that, right? I'll also duplicate the shelf and make a wee little baby shelf to place up top. Now I don't spend too much time blocking things out. I like to get right into the action. I'll add a subsurf modifier, crank that bad boy up to two, mean crease some edges to help it hold some form, delete the mirror mod for now, and then apply our subsurf. I'll shoot over to sculpting with our end shells selected because we're going to do some sculpting. But first I want to get some high poly, good topology, for essentially zero effort. I can press Shift R to pull up a resolution guide for our remesher, and I'm going to go real small, like 0.02 small. I'll go up to the remesh button. You can see our voxel is about 0.02. I'll want to smooth out the normals, and we can go ahead and remesh. As easy as that, we've got some pretty consistent topology that's going to be super smooth to sculpt on. Now, let's actually get to it. I want to sculpt the macro details first, which in this case are going to be the larger edge wear. Now is a time you can get creative with how you do that, but an easy way is to use the scrape brush and just get to scraping. Subtlety is key and less is more, so on and so forth, you know the bit. I'm not going to tell you how to run your life. Ultimately, you don't want it to be overpowering though, so take some note. Next thing I want to do is add some of the wood grain to the faces of it. There's a variety of brushes you could use for this, but I opted for using the clay brush. I started by simply blocking in some stretches to get the idea of their placements, and then using the pinch brush to close them in on their ends to make them look more like splits in the wood. So now that we've gone pro using the remesher, let's take the shelf for a whirl. We will add the subsurf mod, mean crease more edges, apply the mod, and set our voxel size. I'm feeling 0.01 this time. Smooth out the normals, slap the button, and look at it go. Like our shelf, let's add a multi-resolution modifier so we can start adding some edge damage and wood grain. The process was the exact same as it was before for the end piece, so nothing different here. Pinch those splits back together, and it's starting to look like it's all coming together. Alright, enough about wood. We need to start populating our shelf with items. Let's start off easy and do some hard surface modeling with a jar. Like all great things, let's start with a cube. If you've seen any video on this show before, you know I love me some bevel subsurf modifiers. I'll change the limit method to weight and mark some edges to be beveled. I was trying to get a square base with a rounded neck because that's where we're going to add some cork. I'll use a circle to start off, positioning it inside the neck of the jar. I'll extrude up and in and bevel subsurf it to smooth everything out. I'll also want to close the bottom since we're going to be able to see through the glass. Next I'll apply the modifiers, head over to sculpt and remesh it again to get consistent topology for what we're about to do because it involves the B word. Boolean, the B word's Boolean. I'll use a bunch of spheres as our cutters and position them around the cork to cut out smaller air pockets from the geometry. I tried to be as random as I could, and I'm sure you could use some form of particle or hair system to set it all up, but hey, there's nothing wrong with a little elbow grease. Once I'm satisfied with the results, I'll apply the Boolean, swap into sculpt mode, and head over to this video sponsor, Voxel Remesh. <laughs> I love this remesh. With our jar model done, let's have some fun making scrolls. Sounds a lot cooler than making parchment, right? Start with a plane, stretch it out in edit mode on the Y axis, and subdivide it several times, making sure that you're getting square faces and not rectangular ones. It'll help for later. Now I'm going to add a path curve and give the plane an array mod with a fit type to that curve. Then I'll give the plane a curve mod to be able to follow the path curve. Now when I edit the curve, the plane is going to deform with it, giving us some pretty solid control. And because the array is set to fit the length of the curve, we have a never-ending scroll. Talk about real magic, am I right? We just need to position the handles of the curve into a spiral, extruding when we need to, and we can pretty easily get a convincing scroll. 
I'll add a solidify mod to make it thick with three C's and make sure that an array mod has merge selected or you will get gaps in your plane. Add a subsurf as well if you want to smooth it out. And finally, I'll add a lattice mod too. Make sure your lattice encompasses the entire model and add some loops using the modifier panel since these are how we will be manipulating the scroll. On the scroll, with the lattice modifier, select our lattice we've just placed. Now I can edit the lattice to affect the scroll without having to destructively play around with the verts of the scroll. Can somebody say magic? Play around with it, get something you like or don't like if that's your thing. Finally, I will then manipulate some smaller detail on the actual mesh using proportional editing. I don't want to have any drastic changes here, but only things that would be too tough to capture if I was using the lattice. Next up, let's do some shrooms. Using my magical abilities and incantations, I grew this mushroom from a simple circle. Using a subsurf and extruding upwards, there's really no more magic to it than that. After remeshing, let's get into sculpting some details. With the crease brush, I'm going to venture down to the symmetry options and change the radial Z to 10. Now when I sculpt, around the Z axis, I'll have the equivalent of 10 brushes all working at the same time. With just three strokes, I'm already done. But now I need to add some more info to the cap. With the blob brush, I'll change the method stroke to be drag dot, which is going to allow me to just slap on blobs wherever I please. Vary the sizes and positions, and I'd say that's about done. Now, let's get freaky with some more lattices. We've already seen how to set one up, and nothing is different here. I'll play around with deforming the cap, as well as the stock. Honestly, lattices are just a lot of fun. I'd really recommend including them into your work as often as you can. Finally, I think we have time for one more item. So I'm gonna go make a fang and there's nothing you can do to stop me, unless you can time travel. In that case, maybe you could. So what kind of animal's fang are we making? Oh, I don't know, something that has fangs? Don't ask me hard questions, all right? I just used a circle, subsurfed it, and then remeshed for sculpting time. I didn't wanna to do too much sculpting, but just enough to give it some little details. A crack here and there, scrape some faces to give it a worn look, and I'm ready to call it. I'm going to hang this fang from one of the end pieces as well, so we can quickly add some string using a curve. So while our models may look good, I can't say they look overly magical. Let's fix that. I'll start with the cork. Using the principled shader, I give it a fairly simple beige color, but nothing too crazy because I don't want it to be distracting. For the jar, there is a bit of setup needed when making glass. I'll change the blend mode to be alpha blend, and turn on screen space refraction. Over on our render properties, I'll check on screen space reflections and turn on the hidden refractions button as well. Now when I go back and put the transmission up to one, we can see through our jar and get some cool light bending. But we add these undesirable lines from the interiors of the jar itself. To turn that off, I just unchecked show back face since I didn't really care about the interior for the look I wanted. We can also change the index of refraction for different looks as well as altering the color of our jar to match some spooky themes. For our scroll, I'm gonna use an RGB node to determine the color because I'll want to add some variation to the albedo using procedural textures. I'll add a moose grab texture and connect it using the mix RGB node. I'll set the factor to be closer to one so that we are only getting a little bit of the moose grab showing through. Moose grab, moose grave, musgrave? I don't know, whatever that node is. I've gone ahead and also unwrapped the mushroom using the smart UV unwrap because, well, I'm lazy, but let's just say I'm efficient. Because I'm going to be doing some texture painting as well, it isn't overly critical. I'll add the material and create a new image texture that we're going to use for the base color. Using some pretty simple solid colors, I'll start painting them on. I'll make sure to blend and blur as well because I'm going to want soft features across the board. For the string, we're going to use procedural textures again. For the color, I will use a wave texture to start. I'm going to get the waves running along the stretch of the string via its UVs and rotate them using a mapping node to give it some skew. I can use the wave texture as a bump map for the normals and I'm also going to use it as a mask between two RGB nodes. I'm thinking I will also hand paint our fang as well since it really is such a simple asset. It is all stuff you have seen before, however I'm going to paint in some shadow detail on the interior of it as well. I'll also paint some highlights for the edges, but really this part is mostly optional because you really can't see it anyways. Finally, we need to take a look at our shelf again. I'm going to use procedural textures, so there is no need to unwrap it this time. I'll pop in two RGB nodes 
and mix them together. The bottom color, I'll make a solid brown. I then want to use a wave texture as the factor for the mix of these two colors. Oh, perfect, just what I was hoping for. Yeah, we're going to need to fix that. I'll change the direction to be Y and the profile to be Saw. This will give it that more wood grain look. The distortion is what you're going to want to play with to give it that organicness. I'll change the top color to be a lighter reddish brown, and I'd say that's looking pretty sweet. Now we would want to change the roughness a little bit, so let's plug the factor of the wave texture into the roughness and use a map range node to play around with it. I played around with the two min and two max values to see what I like and make the whole model just less glossy overall. So now that everything's been set up, let's mess around a little bit. Add some jars here and there and change some of their models, scatter some parchment, and get shroomy. I've also added some variation to some of the glass to give them different colors. I've also gone ahead, added some lights to our scene to give it a warm feel, and that about wraps it up for us, friend. Thanks to everybody that voted on this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you like this kind of Blender content. And as always, I've been Chunk. This has been Let's Build It in Blender. Later, skater. All right, cookies, I've got a question for you. I don't know what to wear this year for Halloween. Now, obviously, it's an unconventional Halloween, but all the same. I want to look cute, I want to look intimidating, and I want to look spooky. All right? Make sure to vote down below in our community tab and uh, help me pick an outfit.